In the Egwendeni region of Malawi, participants in Soils, Food and Healthy Communities Project are acting both as agricultural researchers and farmers. They are discovering that the key to food security is not found solely in increasing expensive petroleum-based fertilizer, but on improving soil fertility through the cultivation of local knowledge and alternative crop practices. Farmers are using new forms of legumes, such as groundnuts and pigeon peas, interplanted with maize to improve the soil's fertility. Farmers are using these legumes to improve their soil fertility. Uh, they're replacing at least one application of commercial fertilizer in their fields. Legumes have many benefits. They strengthen the soil structure, protect it from erosion, put carbon and nitrogen back into the soil and improve water retention. They are also high in protein, providing a significant improvement in child nutrition. Farmers are also investing in more drought-resistant crops. Farmers have expressed a lot of interest in testing out drought-tolerant crops because farmers are saying the rains are less predictable, we need to have more options and we need to have options that are more drought tolerant. This bag and this one and this one and this two. So this is soya, bags of soya. So you can see this is all the project's profits. Yeah. We got seed from the project, just one kg. I've multiplied that seed up to this, you can see this. Locally adapted strategies of legume management and drought-resistant crop cultivation are positive and sustainable coping mechanisms that Malawian farmers can use and share so that their children will grow up healthy and strong and more people will have the tools and skills necessary to combat climate change. Adaptation and carbon reduction strategies are complex and rely on the local knowledge, intuition, and creativity of the communities that deal firsthand with the effects of a changing climate. These are extremely useful and concrete steps towards a more sustainable and hopeful future for African farmers. <laughs> Africans are doing their part to mitigate the effects of climate change. As a global community and individual citizens who continually encroach on the limits of our global food supply, we must do ours. If we're serious about helping those who are vulnerable and food insecure in the world, the aid our government directs to farmers should be used to support sustainable, farmer-led solutions and agricultural adaptations to climate change. There are no quick technical fixes or one-size-fits-all solutions to the current problems faced by African farmers. Sustainable solutions must come from the communities that deal firsthand with the effects of a changing climate and rely on their local knowledge, intuition and creativity. I think it's a bitter irony that uh, the place that is least responsible for global climate change is probably going to be the one taking the most uh, pain from that uh, global climate change. As most of you know, Canada is currently number two in the per capita global uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Business as usual is no longer an option. We must reduce our own greenhouse gas emission. With regard to Africa, our priority must be support for climate change adaptation to reverse the unfortunate decline in support for small-scale farmers. The time to act is now. We must urge the Canadian International Development Agency to commit to establishing an agricultural sectoral priority with particular attention to strengthening the livelihoods of small-scale farmers. Urge the Canadian government to provide up to $300 million per year in additional funding to CEDA, which is about $10 for every Canadian, to enable this new agricultural sector priority with a total budget of at least $500 million per year. We must act in support of climate change adaptation in African communities. We must work together to ensure that all people have enough to eat now and in the future.
Bye.